With her story, The Gift I Gave Myself, please welcome Robin Gerber. <laughs> My son Sam was eight years old. I loved that little boy so much. He was my heart. I just wanted to be close to him. I wanted to understand him. I wanted him to understand me. But unlike his older sister, he didn't really like to do the things I like to do. I'd take him to children's theater, and he'd sit in fidgety silence. I took him to a wonderful musical one time, and when we came out, he said, Mom, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> we had a wonderful trip to New York, at least I thought so, but, well, that's Sam's get me out of here look. <laughs> then I tried a dude ranch in Cody, Wyoming. Yeah, you can see the only happy one on the horse was me. But there was something that Sam really loved. He loved to play soccer. That made him so happy. And he would run up and down on our wide front lawn in front of the house. He'd dribble and try tricks, pass the ball to himself, make up all kinds of games. He looked so happy when I looked outside and saw him there that one day I thought, you know, maybe instead of trying to make Sam come my way, I should go his. So I went to the door, hey Sam, you think you could teach me to play soccer? <laughs> he didn't miss a beat, sure mom. But there was a twinkle in those blue eyes of his and a sly smile on his face. Okay mom, here's what you do. You put the ball down in front of your kicking foot and your other foot, well the ball's gonna go where your toe is pointed. He was a good teacher, patient, kind. And as he was teaching me, my neighbor Julie came over. Robin, you play soccer? That's fantastic. We have a women's team. You should play with us. Now, Julie, Julie, I'm 47 years old. I have never kicked a ball with my foot until this very moment. I, I've never played on a team of any kind. I, really, I would not be any help to you. Oh, no, no. We'd love to have you. We'll teach you how to play. We practice on Saturday, 10 o'clock, Rock Creek Park. I'll come and pick you up. Sam gave me a nudge. Mom, got to try new things. <laughs> got to take a risk. The boy understood irony. <laughs> that first practice was like a slapstick comedy routine. I went out there and I just ran as hard as I could and tripped over my own feet and fell flat on my face. Then I went to kick the ball, and I kicked a little too hard, I guess, and fell down on my back. When I went to actually kick the ball, I ended up kicking someone's leg. Well, maybe more than one someone, actually. I looked like a complete idiot. I knew that. Uncoordinated, had no idea what I was doing. And yet, I had more fun than as long as I could remember. I was hooked. Soon I got on a team. Vintage Lightning. That's me down in the corner there. Yeah. So they tried me in midfield. That's where you play in the middle of the field. You're supposed to get the ball and pass it to your teammates. Except I kept passing it to the other team. So then they tried me back in defense. And well, I just I got scored on so many times it was I was getting depressed in truth. And so they put me up front. There I was, center forward. And the idea was at least I couldn't do much damage and maybe, you know, I might kick the ball on the goal. <laughs> and one game, one game, Tracy, who was a big, beautiful player, she gathered the ball on the left side and she came dribbling down really fast. And I knew my job. My job was to run parallel to her just in case a defender came and she had to pass off the ball and I'd be there. And I'm running as hard as I can. But Tracy, Tracy had the best kick on the team. I knew she was going to make a goal, but I was doing my part. And all of a sudden, instead of kicking it in, she made a beautiful pass. It came right in front of me, and I could not do anything else, but, well, it bounced off the toe of my boot, and it went past the goalie, and <laughs> goal! <laughs> my teammates went nuts. They were screaming. They were me on the back 
hugging me. You would have thought every one of them had won an Olympic gold medal. <laughs> they remembered their first goal. I was glowing for a week. Well, I did something a little bit crazy then. I decided to coach, co-coach Sam's team. And I went on to an even harder team. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Um, I went on to an even tougher team, the Ageless Wonders. <laughs> yeah. Now we were playing younger, tougher, stronger women. And I was getting hurt. I twisted my knee, broke my wrist, pulled muscles I didn't even know I had. Now I had to really learn to do headers, and I really wasn't very good at those. That's when the ball is coming down from way up in the air, and you bounce it off, well, it's supposed to be this part of your head, except I kept bouncing it off my eye or my <laughs> nose. And really, I came home with so many black eyes that my neighbor across the street came over one day, and she said, Robin? Is everything okay with, you, with your husband? <laughs> it was. One game I was out there on the field, we were short of players, but suddenly I felt this, this pull in my ankle and it hurt, it hurt more than anything I'd ever experienced. And I limped off the field, went up to our, to our captain, Kathy. I said, Kathy, I don't know what I did. I, I can't play, I, I may never play again. And she looked at me and she said, what are you, crazy? You pulled your Achilles tendon. We've all done that. We're short of players. Get back out on the field. It won't get much worse. <laughs> so I did. Who knew? I wasn't made of China. I was tougher than I ever knew. I was stronger than I understood. I played with women. We didn't know anything about each other except our names and where we liked to play on the field. But we were teammates. I was an athlete. And when I came out for every game, my heart would pound so hard when that whistle blew. My breath would get short because I wanted to do good. I wanted to do better than I had the last game. I wanted to make a move I'd never made before for them. Sisterhood was powerful on the soccer field. I'm 65 now. I played soccer for 16 years, up until a few years ago. It was a gift I gave myself, and I miss it. But it still lives in my memories, and sometimes in my dreams, where I'm running down the field faster and stronger and more skilled than I ever was before, and the ball's at my foot, and I'm dribbling toward the goal, and I cock my leg, and I bang it into the top of the net right past the goalie's arms. That's a good dream. <laughs> and soccer lives in my store of courage. Whenever I think about and do the thing I thought that I couldn't do. But the greatest reward from soccer came on that, in that front yard, where I kept playing with Sam until he moved away from home. And between crazy games and funny goals and beating each other with the ball and hugging and laughing, between defense and offense in that front yard, my beautiful little boy became a young man. And in those magic moments on that level field, when we would stop to tie a shoelace or take a break or take a drink, Sam would open up to me in ways that he never had otherwise. And a rare relationship and a beautiful one was created between him and I that still endures. The greatest gift I gave myself from soccer was that. I made my way Sam's way. And that made all the difference. Thank you.